Hey everyone, in this video we're looking at pH calculations for a weak acid titration. I already did a video on a strong acid, strong base titration. The only difference here is we're using a weak acid that we're titrating instead of a strong acid. So the prompt says that we have 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCHO2, which is formic acid. It gives us the pKa and Ka information there, and it's titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, which of course is a strong base. I've got the reaction right here as well. I've got hydroxide ions, that's from the strong base, plus the formic acid molecule, and that's written together as HCHO2, remember, because it's a weak acid. So it's mostly like this until it gets titrated. And that's gonna produce water as well as formate, the conjugate base of formic acid. So the first thing that we don't know yet is how much NOH do we add to get to that equivalence point? So let's just do our quick calculation of that. We'll use, of course, MAVA equals MBVB. Solve that for volume of base in this case, because that's what we don't know. And 0.1 molar of the acid. We've got the volume of acid of 25 milliliters. And of course, we're gonna divide by the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide concentration, and we're gonna get 25.0 milliliters. We'll mark that spot on our titration curve right here is our equilibrium volume. And now we're ready to calculate some pHs along this. The first one we'll start with is just the initial pH. So to start off with this, we're gonna write the acid dissociation of formic acid. So I've got that written here. It's different than the neutralization reaction, of course. The neutralization is like the base, plus the acid, and it gives us water and the, and the salt. But in this case, we're just looking at the dissociation of formic acid because we haven't added any base yet. So this is just the normal equilibrium of this weak acid in solution. So we'll start off with an ice table, and we've got 0.1 molar of the formic acid, and we've got zero molar of the H plus in the conjugate base. And of course, that acid is gonna decrease by X. We don't know that X yet. And then the other two will increase by X, just a standard ice table for a weak acid and we get 0.1 minus x, and x, and x. Then we'll write the Ka expression for this, since this is an acid dissociation. So Ka equals, of course, the H plus concentration times the conjugate base divided by the acid, and we'll go ahead and sub in those numbers there. So x times x is x squared over 0.1 minus x. We'll use the x is small approximation that we usually use in these, and get x squared over 0.1, and we'll solve for x, x equals the square root of 0.1 times our Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that comes out to be 0.0042426 molar. That X is the concentration of our H plus. So we'll take negative log of that to find the pH, and we get a pH of 2.37. I went through that really quickly with the assumption that anybody watching this video on pH titrations of a weak acid strong base titration curve is pretty good with creating an ice table, using a K expression, solving for pH. But if you need to, pause the video so you can work back through what we just went through there. All right, I'm gonna plot that in initial pH on my titration curve here. I've got that point. All right, now let's add some base. So let's say we've added five milliliters of base. We're before the equivalence point, which is 25 milliliters, remember. So we're before that equivalence point. And anytime we do this, we first have to do a stoichiometry calculation and then we'll calculate the pH. I always do that stoichiometry calculation in the form of a before add after table. Remember when we do the before add after table, we have to be working in moles because this is a stoichiometry um, calculation that we're doing. Hydroxide, we have approximately zero. And our acid, let's see, we've got 25 milliliters. So that's 0 0.025 liters times 0.1 molar. And we're gonna get 0 0.00250 moles of the acid. Also in our before, the conjugate base concentration, we've got approximately zero. We haven't neutralized any of this acid. So technically we'd have a little bit of this, but it's gonna be a really, really small amount. So approximately zero. Now let's go ahead and add some base. So how much base we're adding? We added five milliliters, that's 0 0.005 liters. Multiply that by 0.1 molar, and then we get 0 0.0005 moles. Those moles of base are gonna get neutralized by the acid that's already present there. So we'll be left without any hydroxide and we'll have 0.0020 moles of the formic acid left. Of course, what happened to that other 0.0005 moles of the formic acid? Well, it was converted into the formate ion or the conjugate base. So we've got 0.0005 moles of that conjugate base. Now here's where we can use a shortcut, Henderson Hasselbeck, because we have a number of moles of the conjugate base and we have a number of moles of the acid. So we can use those directly in the Henderson Hasselbeck equation to calculate our pH. That equation, of course, is pH equals pKa plus log of the base over the acid. Our pKa, it told us in the problem, was 3.74, plus log of, it looks like our base is 0 0.0005, and then our acid is 0 0.0020. Now, of course, these technically aren't concentrations, but here I have concentrations, 
But the thing is, those moles, if we converted to concentration, we would divide this number by the same volume that we divided this number by. So mathematically, that's a wash. It, it, it's not gonna matter. So we can actually just take the number of moles and go ahead and sub them into this equation, even though it's technically not the concentrations, it'll work just fine for us. All right, so put that in the calculator, I get pH equals 3.14, and that's the pH after five milliliters. So I'll add that point on our titration curve right here. To recap that real quick, if we're before the equivalence point, but we've added some base, we'll do a before add after table or a stoichiometry calculation to determine the number of moles of acid left and the number of moles of conjugate base. Then we just use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH. All right, up next, now let's add some more base till we hit the half equivalence point. How do we know when we hit the half equivalence point? Well, the equivalence point was 25 milliliters of base added. The half equivalence point is half of that, so 12.5 milliliters. This turns out to be the easiest one in this whole titration curve. And that's because at the equivalence point, the pH is always gonna be equal to the pKa. That's always gonna be true for a weak acid in a titration curve. So in this case, our pKa is 3.74. So that's our pH at the half equivalence point. Now why is that? We can actually show that in the henderson hasselbalch equation. Here we have pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. Now think about it, if we're at the half equivalence point, we've titrated half of the acid. So let's say, just real easy numbers real quick. Let's say we had 10 moles of the acid and we titrate half of it. Well, how much acid would we have left? Well, we started with 10, we titrated half of it, we've got five moles of the acid left. Okay, well, what about the base? Well, that five moles of acid got converted into five moles of base. So the moles of acid and the moles of conjugate base are equal to each other at the half equivalence point. Great, so what does that mean for a henderson hasselbalch equation? That means that this, the conjugate base, equals the conjugate acid concentration. So this and this are the same. This would be log of one, and log of one is zero, so pH equals pKa. This is especially important to remember, it's a special point about a weak acid titration curve, pH equals pKa at the half equivalence point, write it down and get it tattooed on your hand somewhere. You won't regret it. I mean, maybe you will. Disclaimer, if you're one of my students, don't go get that tattoo. I don't wanna to have to explain to a parent why. All right, let's plot that point on our titration curve, 12.5 milliliters right there, and that's a pH of 3.74. All right, up next, Let's add a little bit more. In this case, we've added 20 milliliters. We're still before the equivalence point. So we'll do it just like we did the five milliliters one. We're still before the equivalence point. So we'll still set it up exactly the same. I've got my before add after table to do my stoic calculation. Zero of the hydroxide, 0 0.0025 moles of the formic acid, and approximately zero of the conjugate base to start. And then we're gonna add 0 0.0020 moles of the hydroxide. And of course, we'll have 0 0.0005 moles left over of the acid. We've got 0 0.0020 moles left over of the conjugate base. And at this point, we just substitute it into the henderson hasselbalch equation. So I'll rewrite that equation out right here. And then I'm gonna substitute those two values into my equation. So my base was 0 0.0020 and my acid was 0 0.0005. And then I'll just put that into the calculator. I get a pH of 4.34. That pH is still increasing. It's not increasing a whole lot, but it is increasing, which makes sense because we're adding base. I'll plot that on my titration curve right here. And so we've got kind of a nice straight line. It's a little bit steeper than the strong acid, strong base titration curve was. So if you've noticed that, that is a difference here. Now let's jump to the equivalence point. If you remember from strong acid, strong base titrations, the equivalence point is the easiest pH to calculate. It's always seven but not here. That's only true for strong acid, strong base titrations. For the weak acid, it's actually the hardest calculation. It's the most involved. So buckle up, here we go. Equivalence point of weak acid, here's how you do it. So let's start with a before add after table um, and just see what we get. So we're at the equivalence point. It's gonna look like this. I filled that in really quickly. Let's take a look. I've got 0 0.0025 moles of the acid, but I've reached the equivalence point. So I've added an equal number of moles of hydroxide. So all of this gets neutralized. I have zero left over of my acid. It's all been converted into conjugate base. Now, if I had passed the equivalence point, I would have some excess hydroxide, which would be great. I could calculate pOH and, and then we're good. But I don't have any leftover hydroxide concentration. All of the hydroxide added is neutralized by the acid. I'm left with zero here. Now your first thought might be, well, let's just substitute this into the henderson hasselbalch The problem is if either of these numbers is zero, we get an undefined log value, and that's not gonna be helpful to us. 
you also might be tempted to think, well, we don't have any of this acid left. There's no OH. Well, aren't we just at pH 7? The problem with that is we've created this formate, and the formate ion is the conjugate base of a weak acid. If you remember, a conjugate of a weak acid or base does affect the pH. Basically, we've created an acidic or basic salt. Specifically, it'll be a basic salt in this case. So what we need to do is think about what does this leftover formate do in water? How does it react? So first, let's calculate what that formate concentration is. We just have the moles of formate right now. So the concentration of formate is going to be the 0.0025 moles divided by the liters. Now we start with 25 milliliters. We added 25. Okay, so we're at 50 milliliters at this point. I'll divide those out and I get a concentration of 0.05 molar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what does the formate do in water. So I'm going to rewrite out a new equation, this case with formate plus water. And what's going to happen here? Well, the formate, of course, can accept a hydrogen from the water. So it's actually going to produce some of the formic acid back and we'll be left over with hydroxide. Now you might see where we're going with this. We're going to set up an ice table for this reaction and figure out what that hydroxide concentration is going to be. The hard part's kind of over there. The hard part was knowing to set this equation up. But remember, we got this by creating this before and after table. We saw that we had moles of formate left over and now we're just figuring out, okay, what does the formate do in the water? Then we write this reaction out, and then we'll do our ice table. So we'll set up the ice table. It looks like we've got 0.05 molar of the formate. We got that from this right here. And then zero of both of the other ones. It's just a normal ice table situation here. And of course the formate is gonna decrease by some amount we'll call X. The others will increase by X, and we've got our equilibrium values right there. Now, this is not an acid dissociation. It's a base dissociation. So we can't use Ka for it, we've gotta use KB. Luckily, we can convert from Ka to KB um, pretty easily. Our KB expression, of course, is x squared over 0.5 minus x. And let's calculate what that KB will be equal to. So we know that Ka times KB equals KW. KW is just 10 to the negative 14th. That's just a constant for water. We'll solve for KB. We'll get 10 to the negative 14th, which is our KW, divided by our Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4th. I'll substitute that into the calculator and I get a KB equal to 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11th. There's our KB. I can use that to calculate X and then we'll have our hydroxide concentration and then we'll be good to go from there. So I'm going to rewrite this with the change is small approximation. We do have a very small KB, so this approximation is valid. And then we'll just solve for our X there. X equals the square root of 0.05 times the KB. Enter that into the calculator and we get X equals 1.667 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. And that is our hydroxide concentration. We can take negative log of that to get pOH. And that is gonna give us 5.778. Take 14 minus the pOH to get the pH. And we're gonna get a pH of 8.22. Finally, at the end of all of that, 8.22 is our pH at the equivalence point. So I'm gonna plot that point. It goes right here at our 25 milliliters, and there's our equivalence point pH. Again, how did we get there? We started with the before add after table, did our stoichiometry calculation, saw that we had only the formate left, we calculated the concentration of the formate, then we wrote out a reaction of formate in water, we added the concentration right there, we solved our ice table to get this, and of course we had to calculate Kb from our Ka using this equation, and that gave us our hydroxide concentration, then we just did our normal pH calculations to find the pH from there. Okay, that was a lot. Let's go to another calculation after the equivalence point, but hopefully this one will feel a little bit familiar if you've done strong acid, strong base titrations, because it actually ends up being the same thing after the equivalence point as it was for the strong acid, strong base. In this case, we've added 30 milliliters. We're clearly past the equivalence point of 25 milliliters. And so we'll just start off with our before add after table, like we've done a million times at this point. So we've got this to start off with, our 0.0025 moles of our acid. We added 0.0030 moles of our base. Of course, we got that by taking 30 milliliters, convert to 0.030 liters, multiply that by the concentration of our base. All right, so what do we have left? Well, all of this gets neutralized. We'll be left with 0.0005 of the hydroxide, zero of that. And we've got 0.0025 moles of the formate. But here's the thing. The formate has relatively little effect compared to the hydroxide concentration. 
So if we get a hydroxide concentration number, we can just use that to calculate the pOH and then the pH. So we're not worried about this like we were in the equivalence point. Because we have this excess hydroxide, we can just use that to calculate the pOH and the pH. So we've got 0 0.0005 moles of hydroxide. We'll calculate the hydroxide concentration, 0 0.0005 moles. We'll divide by the volume. We had 25 milliliters and we added 30, so that's 55 milliliters. So divide by 0 0.055 liters. We get 0 0.0090 repeating um, molar for our hydroxide. Take negative log of that, we get a pH of 2.04. 14 minus that, we get a pH of 11.96. I'll graph that on my titration curve at 30 milliliters up here, just under 12. For sake of time, I'm not gonna calculate the next point. I'm gonna do 40 milliliters. If I calculated though, I would just follow all of this procedure again for the different volume. At 40 milliliters, we get a pH of 12.3 something. It's right in there. And we've got our nice S-shaped titration curve right there. Now there's two important points that I wanna just go ahead and mark on the titration curve that we have. The first of course is the equivalence point. We know the equivalence point has a volume of 25 milliliters in this case. We found that with MV equals MV at the very beginning. And we know that equivalence point pH value is gonna be 8.22. If I just had the graph and no calculations or other data, I could find where this point is right here, where it's kind of the most vertical, and go over here to estimate what that equivalence point pH would be. The second point, just as important for us, is gonna be that half equivalence point. To get the half equivalence point volume, just divide the equivalence point volume by half. That's gonna be 12.5. And of course, I can find the pKa for my graph if I find this point, and I just follow it over on the graph right there. That's gonna give me my pKa. In this case, of course, was 3.74. So remember that half equivalence point, very important. Now let's do a quick summary for weak acid strong base titrations. How did we get the initial pH um, in this titration curve. Well, we did an ice table because we just had a weak acid that we started with. We did an ice table, our Ka expression. We calculated the H plus concentration from that and then to the pH. Okay, what about when we're before the equivalence point? We've added some base, but we're not to the equivalence point yet. First thing that we always start off with is gonna be our before add after table. That's gonna give us the concentration of acid left over as well as the conjugate base. We can use that data in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which gives us the pH. Now there's a special case, remember, at the half equivalence point. How do we find the pH at the half equivalence point? Well, we remember that the pH at the half equivalence point is equal to the pKa. Simple as that, but remember that, it's really important. How do we find the pH at the equivalence point of a weak acid titration? This is the big one um, that takes a long time, but how we do it is we take the conjugate base, we do the ice table based on the conjugate base, and we use the Kb, we use that to calculate our hydroxide concentration. This requires us writing a reaction of conjugate base plus water, gives us some products. We do the ice table, KB, all of that, we get the hydroxide concentration. And then from there, calculate the pOH and then the pH. Now what if we're after the equivalence point? It's the same thing as it was with the strong acid, strong base titration. After the equivalence point, we're gonna start with a before add after table. We're gonna have some excess hydroxide and we can use that hydroxide concentration to calculate pOH and then pH. So that's a summary of how you do all the pH calculations in a weak acid strong base titration curve. All right, thanks for watching to the end. That was a lot of calculations. This is a calculation heavy section for sure of the curriculum. But if you do a million of these, then they start to become kind of routine. All right, good luck doing some chemistry.